God bless you, loved ones. Welcome to the Word with Chester. Today we'll be continuing our study in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of St. Matthew. In our last setting, we, we studied to verse 15. Today we'll start our study in verse 16. But if you'll allow me to, I'm going to give just a preface before we start verse 16 and let you know uh, a, a bit of what we covered on our last session. Jesus had commissioned his disciples to go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He had instructed them not to go to the Gentiles because he, there was a person that uh, uh, in time would come and go to the Gentile nation and preach the gospel to them and, and, and give them this great message. Uh, but he instructed his disciples to not go to the Gentile nations, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, you can read uh, and go to our archive sections and, and, and listen to that session. I believe it would be enlightening to you even in going to this session. He had told his disciples, preach the kingdom of heaven is at hand, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, cast out demons, freely ye have received, freely give. Uh, so he instructed them, what you saw me do, you saw me healing, you saw me cleansing the leper, you saw me uh, casting out demons, I commission you to do the same thing. So he let them know, you don't have to worry about taking your, 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 your purse or taking your bag. You don't have to worry about taking money. You don't have to worry about a suitcase because I'm going to provide for you. He let them know that a labor is worthy of his hire. Uh, we, we talked about that in depth in our last setting. Uh, and then Jesus let them know that uh, if you go to a city or go to someone's house uh, and they don't receive you, you don't have to stay where you're not wanted. Uh, leave that house and uh, leave that city and shake the dust off your feet. Uh, and he lets us know that if they don't receive the gospel that you have for them, uh, it's going to be better in the day of judgment uh, for Sodom and Gomorrah than it will be for that house or that city uh, that you left because they did not receive you. Uh, and you know what happened to Sodom and Gomorrah? They were destroyed by God himself for their wickedness. As we go into verse 16, uh, uh, Jesus said, Behold, I send you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Be ye therefore wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Well, what is he saying? I'm sending you forth as sheep in the midst of wolves. Well, you have to understand in our previous settings, if this is your first time logging on, uh, go to the archive section. Uh, go to uh, uh, when when Jesus uh, uh, went up into the mountain and sat down and taught them what we call the Beatitudes uh, or the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, read about it when Jesus taught them to be meek, uh, taught them to be humble, taught them to love everyone, taught them to love their enemy, and, and, and many, many things on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, he taught them. But basically it was dealing with, uh, with loving everyone and forgiving uh, others that, that hurt you. Uh, all of these things went in uh, on the Sermon on the Mount. Uh, the basis of it was be meek and be humble. Uh, so Jesus is saying, I'm sending you forth uh, like a sheep. Uh, we know a sheep to be an humble animal, animal who needs to be cared for and needs to be, be watched. And, uh, uh, and, and Jesus said, just like that little humble lamb, uh, I'm going to send you forth and put it in the middle of a pack of wolves. Uh, and you know a pack of wolves will, will devour uh, another animal, animal of, of, of uh, lesser strength than him. Uh, he will, in so many words, uh, have it for dinner. Uh, so Jesus is saying, I'm sending you forth just like this uh, humble sheep uh, in the middle of a pack of wolves. Uh, then he told them to be uh, wise as serpents uh, and harmless as doves. Uh, let me let you know that just because you are saved, uh, just because you have Jesus on the inside, uh, that does not make you stupid. Uh, that does not make you crazy. Uh, but what it does, it makes you humble because you got Jesus on the inside. Uh, it makes you meek uh, because you have Jesus on the inside. Uh, but let me let you know, that does not mean that you are stupid. Uh, Jesus said, be wise uh, as a serpent. Uh, serpent always sees what's going on. Uh, he's ready when you get there. Uh, be wise as a serpent, uh, but yet harmless as a dove. And shall we read on in verse 17? Be aware of men. He could have said, beware of the devil. He could have said, beware of a, a whole lot of things. But he said, beware of men. What are you talking about here? Be 
beware of men, uh, for they shall deliver you up to the council uh, and shall scourge you uh, in their synagogues. Uh, so, so Jesus is saying, uh, well, he sent them to the lost uh, sheep of the house of Israel. Uh, so you have to understand, he equipped them to, to uh, heal the sick. Uh, he equipped, equipped them to cleanse the leper. He equipped them to raise the dead. Uh, and anytime these things are going on, uh, if you let the Holy Spirit work through you, uh, people are delivered, people are, are healed, uh, it's going to cause a following. Uh, people will start following to listen to you and hear what you have to say. Why? Because they can see the power of God working through you. Uh, and in causing this type of uh, atmosphere where people are coming to see, uh, it's also going to bring out the, the religious leaders in their, their what you uh, quote unquote righteous indignation. Uh, they will come down uh, and they will want to talk to you. Uh, well, verse 17 says, be aware of men for they will deliver you up to the council uh, and they will scour uh, scourge you uh, in their synagogues. Uh, well, you have to understand uh, the, the Pharisees and uh, uh, and the scribes, uh, when, when, when you are preaching the kingdom of God, uh, when you are preaching, uh, repent for the kingdom of God, uh, the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Uh, it gets the attention of, of all of those who are religious, uh, all of those who say they are uh, men of God. Uh, and these men, they will understand everything and they will deliver you up to the council. Uh, they will question you in their synagogues. Uh, well, let me read on in verse 18. And ye shall be brought before governors and kings for my sake, not for your own sake, but for my sake, for a testimony against them and the Gentiles. You got to understand it was not just the Jews, but also the Gentiles. Jesus said, you're going to be delivered up to governors and to kings for a testimony against them, uh, for, well, against them and the Gentiles, uh, let, uh, just to let you know that uh, it wasn't just one-sided, uh, it just wasn't one group of people, but it was many in that region that will cause uh, a dissension and cause trouble for uh, the sheep that are going into the pack of wolves. Uh, well, let me read on, but when they deliver you up, uh, be not anxious, uh, 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 take no thought how or what you shall speak, for it shall be given you in the same hour what ye shall speak. Um, in so many words, uh, if you have the Spirit of God in you, uh, you're not going to make up lies, uh, and you don't have to worry about your story. Uh, all you have to do is just go. Uh, in that same hour, uh, it will be given you what you will say. Uh, you don't have to write an essay. Uh, you don't have to uh, write a long speech. Uh, just go. Uh, Jesus will give you what to say in that same hour. Verse 20, and uh, uh, for it is not ye that speak, uh, but the Spirit of your Father who speaketh in you. Uh, you have to get this right now. Uh, it's not you. Uh, when you go up before the council, it's not you that speak, uh, but it's the Spirit of God that's on the inside of you. Uh, it's going to speak through you. Uh, uh, sometime I want to get premature uh, and talk to you about the Holy Ghost, what it is, who it is, how it is, where it is. Uh, but in our future study, uh, we're going to go into the depths of that. Uh, but the Holy Ghost, uh, you don't have to worry about what you're going to say. Uh, all you have to do is just be a willing vessel. Uh, it's going to be giving you uh, what you are going to say uh, in that very same hour. It won't be you that's talking. Uh, it's the Holy Ghost uh, that's going to speak out through you. Uh, well, shall we read on? Thank you, Jesus. Uh, verse 21, uh, and the brother shall deliver up uh, the brother to death, and the father the child, and the children shall rise up against their parents and cause them to be put to death. And ye shall be hated of all men for my sake, but he that endured to the end shall be saved. Well, uh, let me talk on this right now. Thank you, Lord. Uh, give me the strength and the wisdom to, to break this down and make it understandable. Uh, you have to understand. 
Now, it would be great if Jesus would save everybody in the house at the same time or everybody in the world at the same time. If he just speak the word and everybody gets saved and then everybody's walking the same way. But, you know, you have to understand we don't have that luxury. One might get saved, but that doesn't mean the whole household is going to get saved. One in the community might get saved, but that don't mean the whole community is going to get saved. And when that one gets Get saved, uh, he still have to deal uh, with all of those people uh, that have not been enlightened yet. Uh, he's got to deal with all those people uh, that have not been born again yet. Uh, so you got to understand, uh, he's going to be, uh, well, uh, uh, in so many words, uh, when he goes into that atmosphere, uh, he's going to be at odds uh, because everybody's not going to understand him. Uh, why is he acting like that? Uh, why is he talking like that? Uh, how come he's not defending himself? It will called dissension in a house when somebody gets saved. But I guarantee you, if that one would just live for Jesus, regardless of what happens around him, after a while, others in that household will start to get saved. Others in that community will start to get saved and change their life. Then those in the town and those in the region, those in the state and those in the nation, it just takes one to spark a fire and then it'll become a blessing. And then people will start getting saved everywhere. But prior to that time, somebody's got to stand up and say, I'm going to do what's right if everybody's wrong. I'm going to say what's right if everybody's wrong. Let me read verse 23. And when they, uh, peer, uh, when they persecute you uh, in, that, in this city... And into an, go into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the, the cities of, of Israel till the Son of Man be come. In so many words, if they won't hear you in one place, go to another. Don't worry about being persecuted. You won't be able to reach the whole world anyway until before Jesus comes. It's our job just to reach our part and to preach the gospel to as many as we possibly can. We won't reach everybody, but reach the ones you can. Number one, live the life yourself and give your testimony. Tell people that the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Let them know that Jesus loves them. Let them know that Jesus, he's going to come back for us. Let them know what thus saith the Lord. Jesus loves you, my friends, and I do too. My time is rapidly running out for this session, but please pray for this ministry, the Word with Chester Ministries. Pray with us, and if you have a question, if you need to contact me, write me 3741 Candle Bluff Drive, San Antonio, Texas, or go to my website, www.poemsbychester.com. Please contact me. I want you to know I love you, my friends, with the love of the Lord. God bless you.